Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Okay, let's go and get started. Hmm. Can you guys remind me where we were last time? No? Okay, one more to share. Mm. Oh, I don't have any form I share, but I'll share it anyway. Mm. I am like, oh, why do you need We, we did chemical and physical changes. We did all of that, right? Okay, okay look. I posted the lecture. I think I did, maybe I didn't yet, but I did. I think it wasn't ready yet, so I didn't post it. Mm -hmm. That's what happened, because it's not here. Yeah, I got I got the 14th and the 18th or whatever to do again. Okay. Um we talked about the essay question. Yeah, pretty much. Um we're gonna look at the study guide, but it's just mainly a conceptual thing. So we're just gonna look at what you need to know, and then we're gonna open that test today. If it's not already open, I don't remember if I did or not. But basically what we need to be looking at for this test is pretty 
Pretty straightforward. Doesn't have anything associated with it. Okay, fine. Let's try again. See? <laughs> I don't like this sometimes. Okay, nothing. All right, we'll just do this. All right, so according to this, we have to have definitions of matter, pure substance, compound element, mixture, solution, suspension, colloid, and know whether the items on the list are whatever those are, right? Describe the two types of mixtures. Make sure you know how to categorize and give examples. You have to complete a graphic organizer, like the one I gave you. Excuse me. Be able to explain what a solvent, solute, and solution are. These different separation techniques, which are for your essay question. Be able to identify a physical and a chemical change and those indicators. The physical properties are classified as intensive or extensive, know which ones are which. The four states of matter, you know them, and be able to explain it according to the, American, the kinetic molecular theory. Um, define these phase changes of the mesh condensation and operation, blah, 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 all the way to deposition and freezing and melting. And you need to explain what is required. Does it gain energy? Does it lose energy? And then according, and it also describe it based on the kinetic molecular theory. So more, you know, as it melts, the intramolecular forces weaken, uh, the molecules become farther apart the temperature is a little bit higher. And uh, what's the other one? Okay. Temperature. Oh yeah, the outer. Oh, yeah, well anyway, that was it basically. Um, let's see, then you got definitions of heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. Do not worry about formation and dissolution. Those are others, but we're not going to look at those. Um, be able to recognize molecular level drawings like the ones that were in our matter packet of solid, liquid, and gas and of compounds, mixtures, and elements. Okay, basically that is it. Now, when we look at the next part, uh, the exam. The, the exam question. And this one is ready. I'm ready and it's, I think it's not open yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Oh, I need to edit, sorry. I think it's not open. I don't think I opened it yet. Um, let me see. Me up, no, I have it not opened yet. So, um, let me do the 28th. And we're gonna start seeing it today, so. All right, that's already saved. And we're gonna do the same thing for the test, which is next, I think. Mm -hmm. uh -oh, that's just, uh, what is this? This is a, a lecture. Yeah, that's a lecture from before. Let's stop it. <laughs> it's an hour and 16 minutes, so you can skip around just the parts that you really need. And there's the test. Okay. So every time that you're taking a test, I tell you what you're going to need. 
So you'll be ready. You know, it says calculator, periodic table, and scratched paper. Make sure that you have them handy because you will need all of that. Okay, we have a 60 minute time limit. And there are some images on here. And if you don't see an image, you need to let me know. And now I have not yet opened it. Have I? I'm looking at everything but the date. There it is. So it's going to be due the same time as the um, essay question, of course. But they'll be graded separately because if I have an essay question, then the test cannot self-grade. And you will please let me know if there is something wrong with the self-grading like it did last time. I have no way of checking all of these. I mean, I can check them and it's a lot of work. So um, make sure that you know your answers really well. And somebody asked me how many questions. Well, I can do that. I can actually click on it and say there are Forty-six questions total. They vary between multiple choice, multiple answers, uh, matching, and a true or false. Okay. So make sure you take this quiz, test, whatever, and um, we will proceed with one more thing that we haven't done, and that is. The mixture separation, we did a little bit of it, but we haven't finished it. There is a PowerPoint that is that is its name, mixture, um, it's a perfect, I think it's separation of a mixture. No, not there, where is that? There it is. No, it's not on here. Hmm. There it is. Okay, so we're going to look at it real quick. There are the main five that we're interested in. I'm going to skip around a little here and there. So I just want you to know that. And uh, we're going to look at. No. Why are you not opening the way I want you to? No. It's not how we do it. Go away. Gibberish. What about this gibberish too? That's a study I know. Okay, so let's look at, I was waiting for it to load and spaced out for a minute. <laughs> okay, so I was actually hoping it would load here, but it won't open. It won't open here, so we're gonna have to look through there. Yeah, cause it's not associating me. It's a study guide, but not. Not this PowerPoint, it's not associating it with anybody. Just should. Should immediately associate it with. See, it's not doing it. Mm -mm. Just giving me gibberish. Come on, go away. See, I have a jump. There's, this, is, this is a code. Let me see if I can. No, that's not gonna work either. Okay, let me see if I can open the PowerPoint and then open it from there. That's what I've had to do before. And if that doesn't work, we'll just use that one.
finding it. <laughs> okay, I know what to do. I'll just grab it and throw it in there. Oh, there it goes. It's opening now. No, no this is not it. <laughs> no, that is not the one I wanted to open. I wanted seven, eight solutions. Okay. She's all about separating a mixture. No, nope, there's nothing there. Lordy, Lordy, where did you go? Well, we'll just use it here. Like I said, we'll just make it a little bit bigger, but that's all I can do right now. Let's see, that's not too big. No, I think that'll work. Okay, so basically they're, they're asking us what is a pure substance, and it says that a pure substance is one that contains just one part, type of particle. And a mixture contains at least two different types. So a liquid can be either, right? Because you can have water and you can have mineral water. So either one of those, one's a pure substance, the other one is a mixture. Which one of those is a mixture? <laughs> Obviously you're seeing the answer, but basically it says mineral water, orange, and tea or coffee. I can't tell what that is. And they're all mixtures because they all contain more than one thing. Okay, now, when you have a solid and a liquid, you are making a mixture. It doesn't matter what they are, they're two different things. If the solid dissolves, then yes, you have a soluble solid and you will no longer see that solid and you will not be able to tell them apart. If it doesn't dissolve, you would still be able to see the solid. You will have an insoluble solid because you can still see it. That means it didn't dissolve. Okay, next one. If you dissolve a solid in a liquid, or liquid, um, it forms a special type of mixture called the solution. And there are other types of solutions. They're not all liquid and solid, but this is what we're talking about right now. And the very first thing that we know is that we have, just to click on the beaker, but I don't think it's gonna activate. No, because it's not downloaded. This is why I wanted to download it, but it won't let me. Let me see if it'll do it this time once the PowerPoint was open. Maybe it'll wake up and say, yep, yeah, nope, it still didn't. <laughs> okay, so no, it's not working. Mm -mm. Anyway, when you have that, you have what is known as a solute and a solvent. A solute is what goes in it. Like if you were making sugar and water, right? That would be what you want to make um, a solution. But the sugar would be the solute and the water would be the solvent. So remember those two words because they're important for this kind of stuff. Um, we have... Um, the next thing is the separation techniques. In order for you to separate a mixture, and a mixture can be just anything that has two things in it, right? So, or more. Think about how you separate the pasta from the cooking water. And the answer is with a strainer or with a colander, whatever you call them, that's how you do it. How, are you, how do you keep leaves out of the teacup? Well, you have a bag, right? And how do you keep coffee grains out of a fresh pot of coffee? Well, you use what is known as a filter. This technique of separating a solid, an insoluble solid, okay, by, uh, with a filter, right, with a, sieve or a thing that has holes that are smaller than what you want to separate is known as filtration. 
And the act of doing it is called filtering. So insoluble solids can be separated from a liquid by filtration or by filtering. Okay, so this is the next one. If you have a dissolved solid, then you need to remove the liquid. To remove the liquid, you have two choices. You can evaporate it. If the evaporation um, is, is done due to the different melting, I mean, not melting, boiling points of the two substances. So you, as you evaporate one, the other one will remain. And that is if you want to separate a soluble solid, but keep the solute, right? If you want to keep the solvent, then you have another. I'm just going to skip all this. Okay, there we go. That's the next step. Oh, no, this is the next step. We, we watched this one. And we cannot watch it anymore because for some reason the uh, micro that it had, it broke. So, but when you put these dots, you usually put them above that line. That's a pencil line, so it doesn't move. And um, the solute, in this case, is the ink and the solvent is the water because they're soluble mark water, soluble marker. See, there's the word soluble. Then you want them to, you really just you want to use water to, to uh, separate them. Colors, as you know, are made of many different types of combinations. So if you have a black color, that would separate into its uh, components, which is blue, red, and yellow and green, sorry, blue, red, green, yellow, I think. Maybe it's just blue, red, and yellow. But because green is a combination of green, I mean, blue and yellow. So that's another combination. So you want the pure colors and you want to separate them. And what happens here is as the water rises up on the paper, and it touches that little bubble of ink or dot of ink, it pulls the dye with it because it's water soluble up higher. Where does it stop? It just depends on the mass of the color. So if your lower masses are going to be the heavier ones, right? And the higher ones are going to be the lighter. So red, obviously, is lighter than yellow, okay? That's when you want to separate a bunch of things at once that are both soluble in the same solvent. How do you separate the solvent from the solids in a dissolved solution? Well, this is when you want to keep either both or just the one. But the best method to do it is by boiling or distillation. When you do the distillation, you have four, um, three parts. And they are the first one, which is the boiling. That's when the distillation happens, everything's hot. The condensing, that's when the movement across the tube will happen in the, the water being cooler is going to cool down that liquid very fast. It's gonna condense and it's gonna drop into the collecting body. In this case, you have, you know, that's the next, and of course the collection is where you collect it, where you pick it up. Okay, like right here. See, this is what I was describing. This is the boiling, there's two substances here. As one evaporates, the gases have to flow into this tube. This tube has a water jacket the water rises from the bottom to the top so that it can be replenished and quickly because the top here is where it's hotter, right? So you wanna replenish it pretty quickly. And then it cools down and gravity, since this is tilted, makes it slide down this tube 
and fall into the beaker, which is your collecting vessel. And that's how the whole distillation works. Now we need a, th a thermometer somewhere so that we can differentiate the temperatures, right? Uh, because one of the liquids may boil at a certain amount and the other one may boil at a different one. And so you want to be able to pinpoint the time when it's boiling, when it really has reached the maximum before, you know, the, the next plateau before turning all the way into a gas. Because if it turns into a gas, it's gonna come through here, but a liquid won't, okay? So that's it. And the next thing you do is you, um, okay. Let me see here. Mm. Here we go. So that's how that works. Now, the most important part of the distillation is this one because it collects, it actually has all three phases in it, if you think it collects the gas, it cools down the gas into a liquid and the liquid goes out of it into a beaker to collect. So that's pretty much where all of it happens. And anyway, I already explained that. Depending on what you want to do, that's your choice. And remember, you're going to have to do this separation that I spoke with last time. And you're going to have to do it well. So the question is, is the soluble, I mean the soluble, the solid, soluble or insoluble in that solution? If the answer is solid, soluble, insoluble, so it still remains a solid, right? Then what you do is you filter the stuff that you does not dissolve. If the answer is soluble, then what you need to do is you need to figure out whether you want to collect the solvent or the or the solute. And if you want to collect both, then that's another story, but you can still do it. All right. So the next part is to look at this and match them. Let me make it a little bit smaller so that you can see the whole screen because I couldn't get it out of here. So. Um, Hmm. Anyway, I think it's below more. No, doesn't want me to do that. <laughs> okay, so control. There we go. All right, so there they are. All right, you are going to do this exercise. You're going to try to match them correctly. Okay, let's do number one evaporation. Who do we match it to, A, B, C, or D? And you can do it through the chat. So you don't have to speak if you don't want to, but you can do it through the chat. Type it in, A, B, C, or D. I expect all of you to participate because this is how you learn. You're not just here to listen to me. Okay, so how do you do it? Which one is evaporation of these? When do we use it? Okay, somebody answered. Let's see what they said. They said D, okay, and D. No, it is not D because it, when, when you want to evaporate, the things aren't insoluble. So no, that is not it. Who else wants to venture? Another answer. Not D because of that, right? We want a soluble solid and we want to catch one part of it. So which part do we want to catch? That's, remember, we talked about that. That's what matters here is what you want to do with 
the mixture? Do you want to catch the solute or the solvent when it's soluble? If it's insoluble, then no. Then there's only one choice. Well, there's more than one choice, but in this case, this is uh, in water. So we're talking about one choice. <laughs> All right. So which one? For evaporation? Okay. Think about it. You want to separate the solute and the solvent. But which one of those do you want to keep? I showed you the picture. You want to keep the solute, right? So you want to do 1B. So if we were to match them, right? It would be like this, right? Okay, what about filtration? When do we use it? Go ahead and put it through the chat. Yep. Um, going to be A because you, no, not A, sorry. You want to use the, see, this is the key word right here, soluble, and you want to obtain the solute. This time it was insoluble because when you filter, you are using like coffee grains. Think of coffee grains, filtration. The solid, right, the coffee grains want to be separated from the liquid. Okay, the next one is chromatography. We saw and I told you about how you can separate the colors of black ink. So in this case, small amounts of two or more solids all at once, which are soluble in the same solvent, okay? So this was water soluble markers, three, four different colors. So yes, that works. And the last one, obviously by default, right, is distillation with C, because you want to use a soluble solid again, but this time you don't want the solute, you want the solvent. Or you want both, either one, but you also want both. Whereas with evaporation, one of them is going to go away because you're evaporating it. It's a gas. It's no longer going to come back. It's going to go into the atmosphere, to the air, right? So that's why. That's how you do these. All right. So let's just remember these. You might want to take a picture of the descriptions. And the matching, if you can tell which one's matched with whom, I think you can. And um, have them for the next time that we do this. Okay, so that is that one. And pretty much that's where we stop this PowerPoint. We don't need to keep going. We're not gonna do all of this right now, you know. See, that was what I was talking about, solid solvent. Okay, one of the things that I want you to see is the, the, the definition of solute, solvent, dissolving, and all of this stuff. Okay, so like I said, solute is what you add into the solution, right, into the solvent. Solvent is what you have the most of. Um, if you are dissolving something, you are no, you're not melting it. You are just putting it into a solution and that solution is separating it into a cup of tea or into a food, you know, if you put in salt, whatever, into a soup, whatever you might want to think, okay? Melting is a change in state, 
That is not what's happening here. Yes, you, it looks like you're changing in state, but you're not. You're just taking, you're just taking this solvent, right? And you're adding solute. And the solvent itself has to be either polar or nonpolar, depending on what you're adding. So if you add sugar or salt, let's say salt, salt is ionic. It's an ionic compound which means they're charged, the ions are charged. And water is a polar compound, which is, means it's also charged. So you're going to do polar with ionic or polar with polar. The other way that you're gonna mix is nonpolar with nonpolar. Think about oil and water. Oil is nonpolar, water is polar. They don't mix. They don't want to sol be solvent. You know, they're not soluble in each other. They're called miscible because miscibility is for liquids. Solubility is for solids. So just think about that. And you know that, that those two don't mix. Alcohol though, and you put it in water, you have, you know, like isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. That's ice, alcohol and water. Actually, the alcohol is the majority because it's 70% by my, well, it's by weight, so I don't know. And then the rest is water. So if it's by volume, then yes, it's 70. That would be the, the majority. But if it's by volume, by mass, I think it's not necessarily. Okay, so that's those. And we looked at how we would want to do this separation technique last time so you can watch the video when I posted because I totally forgot about it. I'm sorry. I forgot about it and I didn't post it. It actually took a long time for it to finish. And by then I forgot. I went somewhere else and I wasn't finished. So I just... I just totally forgot, turned off the computer, whatever. Just didn't do it. All right, so let me go back to modules. And like I said, I opened that test for you already. So you can look at it and it was 40, how many questions did we say? No, that was in my other class, never mind. We have not looked at it, how many? <clears throat> We have not yet. Have we done our periodic table um, activity where we numbered and put everything on the periodic table? We did, didn't we? Yeah, I thought so. We did it.
Christmas vibes. Did you see the message? 